I'm Crystal Held, a pregnancy and postpartum fitness expert, as well as a women's health physical therapist. With my sister, Amy, we own Expecting and Empowered. I'm gonna run you guys through the postpartum recovery guide. I'll also give some great tips and tricks along the way as we do the exercises. So The first thing that we're going to start with is the pelvic floor and flexibility section. So we're going to get into on our backs into a happy baby position. So I like this position because it helps stretch out the pelvic floor automatically. I'm going to think about pulling air in through my nose. I want it to go all the way down to my pelvic floor. I want my pelvic floor to think about relaxing as I'm in this position. And then I'm going to exhale as I exhale. I'm pulling up from the pelvic floor. I'm drawing the air out of my belly. I'm gonna inhale again, all the way down to the floor. And exhale. Two more of those, inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale in. Exhale out. All right, we're gonna switch it to our front side. We're gonna come into a pigeon set stretch. So on all fours, I'm gonna pull my knee underneath me. And then I'm gonna sit back as comfortably as I can. So this area is typically super tight after being postpartum or after being pregnant because as we're pregnant, our hips will start to rotate out towards the side. If you can, you can bring your forearms down and that butt down a little bit more. I can play with the angle of my chest to get a deeper stretch. And then I'm gonna switch sides here. So one side might be a little bit easier for you than the other. So this side's way easier for me. I'm gonna hold here for about 10 seconds. And the whole time I wanna be breathing in and out, kind of like letting my, know, my body know that this position's okay, everything is good. All right, I'm gonna come back up into that quadruped position. I'm gonna send my butt all the way back here and I'm gonna bring my hands towards the floor. My chest comes down into that child pose position. So I'm gonna take a couple deep breaths here. I'm thinking about drawing air into my bra line. Deep breath in again. And out. Then I'm gonna bring my hands to the side. So I'm angling my upper body. This feels really, really good because it stretches out those lats. There's a lot of carrying baby around in those early postpartum days. So our upper backs will get tight as well. I'm gonna breathe into that bra line again, pulling my sternum all the way down as close to the floor as I can. Breathe in and out, in and out. I'm gonna come back to center for a couple more breaths. In and out. Who does not like some upper back mobility? That feels so good. We wanna make sure that we're doing full exhales. So here's where we'll get into like the meat and bones of the workout. So we're gonna be doing a whole circuit set. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing is squatting. So on this, I'm going to be squatting. I'm gonna hold dumbbells in each hand. So I like to do heavy weight. These are 20s. You can do whatever you feel comfortable with. In the beginning of working out, I like to focus more on form than I do loading the weight. So maybe even body weight or 10 pound weights on each side would be good. We're gonna be doing 15 of those. So there's three. I wanna focus on bringing my booty back. So I'm keeping my chest nice and straight. My butt's coming back. I'm thinking about lengthening and then squeezing on the way up. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. I could use a target like a chair or these little, this little bench here. So in and out. In. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. 
One of the biggest parts is reconnecting to your breath postpartum. A lot of times when we don't have enough strength, we'll just hold our breath and we always want to be making sure we're protecting our body through our breath. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put those weights down. The next exercise coming up is RDLs. So for this exercise, again, I'm thinking hip hinge. So I'm thinking about just bending here. My chest stays straight. The weight's going all the way up in front of the shin. So I'm going to grab those heavy weights again. Weight, legs go wide. And then I'm bending chest nice and tall. I'm looking about 10 feet in front of me as I'm doing this. We're gonna do 15 of these as well. Butt back, I shouldn't feel pulling or twerking on my low back here. There's five, we have 10 more. Inhale, exhale. Butt all the way back. I am so glad you guys showed up today. I feel like in those early postpartum years, it is so hard to make sure that you take the time to heal your body and take some time for yourself for working out. So whether this is at nap time or you have some help, it's always good. And even if our workout gets interrupted, it's great to pause or just be proud of what we were able to accomplish today. Three more. Okay, last one there. We're gonna put the weights back down and then we're gonna pick up one of them. So snatching. So this is an Olympic lift. The weight is gonna come in between your legs and then I'm gonna pull that weight close to my body using momentum to bring the weight up here and then jumping in with the legs. So we're going to do 10 on each side. We'll start with the right side here, coming down so I'm loading butt back again and pull. There's one. Two, breathing, three, four, six. We wanna make sure our ribs not flaring out at this point. It can be real easy to like push out and we wanna make sure that we keep our core engaged. So doing that rib flare totally disengages that core. One more on this side. And then let's switch sides. Weight goes in between legs, butt back, pull up. Two, three, four. Nice and light on your feet. Five, six, seven. Sometimes it's honestly a little bit easier to do this exercise when it is loaded. If you have a lighter weight, it sometimes can be harder to make your form really good. Last one. Okay, and then we have 30 seconds remaining. So I'm gonna finish off with those squats that we started with. Seven more seconds. All right. So here is a little rest break. We can stretch out. We can grab a drink of water or two. We can go right into the next set. So definitely catch your breath here. I like to sometimes do bent over breathing where I'm in the squat position and I'm gonna inhale in all the way to that bra line. This area will get so sore and tender on new moms. Okay, 25 seconds left, but I'm gonna skip and we're gonna go on to the next step here. So the first thing that we're doing is plie squats to calf raises. So we're gonna grab one dumbbell, that goes in the center, our legs go out wide, our toes are pointed wide, butt goes back, loading the glutes backwards. And 
and then we can add the calf raise as we go. So here's five. Five more. Okay, let's go. Last one. But back. All right. We're going to go ahead and place that weight back on the floor. We want to make sure when we place it on the floor, we're nice and careful. All right, really focusing on getting those glutes engaged and some hip extension. We're going to come up onto a set of st onto a stair. At home, if you have like a fireplace, I'm going to think about leaning my chest forward. Again, creating that straight line in my spine. I'm going to load this glute that's going to pull me up. And I'm going to come up for 10. I like to make my arms work at the same time I'm moving those legs. So as I come up, the arms swing back. Could do the side that's most relevant to the side that I'm training. Three more, and then we're gonna switch sides. I wanna power through my heel here. I'm really pushing through the heel to make sure I engage that glute. I'm gonna switch sides, other foot comes on up, and then again, same thing, I'm gonna drive up, come back down slow. That's the hardest part. You wanna come down slow and control. Pull up, down slow. Pull up, down slow. Here's four, three, two, last one. Slow down. Okay, next up we have lateral lunge. So you can choose to do these with weights. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tens for this. Or since we're so early in that postpartum period, you could do body weight too. So again, I'm gonna bring the weights to the side, lunging. I'm gonna keep my chest up, butt back and loaded. We're only doing five each way. We're not doing a ton of them. We're just getting our body used to doing asymmetrical movement. Two more. Last one. All right, we're gonna switch sides. Same thing, but on the opposite side. Leg goes out, butt back, chest up. Whew. Last one on this side. Again, not a ton of them because we're getting used to this movement again. Okay, back to plie squats with calf raises. The idea too is that we can get through these circuits at least twice. Sometimes that's a little harder. So we're gonna come back and up. Plie squat down, calf raise up. think at this time period, it can be really hard too because you don't recognize your body anymore or maybe you're working hard to get back to where your body was pre-baby, but just know that this is a, pro like a work in progress. Things don't happen overnight with it and you need to be kind to yourself and your body for all the things that you've been through. My youngest is four. And I promise you, I'm still working on stuff. It's not as bounce backy as some of these fitness companies make it look. I love really too working and making sure that I'm getting everything as good as I can if I'm planning to have other children as well because we wanna like hit that control, alt, delete button in between kids. All right, we're coming back up for the step up. So up, slow down, up, slow down. All right, I'm gonna do a couple on the other side because we're running out of time. Up, slow down, up, slow and control down. And if you guys stumble and bumble, that's perfect because that's your brain practicing. All right, we are into that rest period again. So I'm gonna grab a drink of water. You guys can towel off, grab a drink of water. All right, 
30 seconds left, but I'm gonna start heading into our next section. So then the next section is actually another circuit here. So we're gonna do circle band lateral walks. So I'm gonna grab one of my circle bands, um, depending on the thickness or the width, it just makes it a little harder or easier. But we wanna again, control booty back. We're gonna step out to the side and then together. I don't want my feet coming super close together because it will take all the tension on the bear. Step to the side, together, side, together. I want to keep my trunk centered up here. I don't want to see a lot of sway as I load and offload my foot. So I'm really, this is as much a core exercise as it is a lower body exercise. In pregnancy, these legs can get a little bit sleepy when we're talking about lateral movement. Our muscles, like our piriformis, get super tight in pregnancy, so we really just need to help our body and our brain wake these up in the postpartum period. These, if you're doing them right, should really be burners. I can already feel it. If I had more space here, I'd be doing 10 of these side to side. So if you have more space at home, you can feel free and keep going back and forth. Last one, each side. Again, keeping that chest, pelvis centered over each other. Next exercise up is hip diagonal. So for this one, again, I'm thinking about my body weight staying center. I'm gonna get in my ready stance and then I'm gonna bring my leg back and forward, back and forth. I like to do like a cha-cha move with my arm. So again, linking that upper body and lower body. Arm back, leg back, arm forward, leg forward. I'm not bringing it all the way in to take tension off there. We still have 10 more and she be burning. If you have other little ones at home besides the new one, it's kind of fun. As my kids get older, they have started to, instead of be like the exercise stoppers, because I had to like stop exercising and deal with them, they like love to work out with me now and hang out there. I feel like the older they get, the easier that gets. They kind of just like get it. Mom is gonna exercise. Mom takes care of her body. It sets a great example to them. Instead of making sure that you're like the last one that gets taken care of. All right, we're switching sides. So we got four on this side already. If you haven't switched, go ahead and switch. We have 10 more. And again, I want to keep that as square as I can. My hip is doing the work here. And I'm still breathing, working that breath all the way down and up as I do that. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Sometimes people get like super concerned about if their breath is just right. Listen. The best breath is breath that you're just working. So it doesn't have to be exactly with exertion when you exhale, but making sure that you're breathing, not holding your breath. Okay, last one with the circle band is hip internal and external rotation. Again, this is something that we just need to get our mind wrapped around doing. This, if we don't have, can create a lot of low back pain tightness. So I'm gonna bring my legs out wide. I'm gonna dip my knee in, ankle up, and then I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna do 10 of these on each side. I wanna to try to relax that lower leg as much as possible. Sometimes it will try to help and try to push into the floor to create stability, but I wanna pull my abdominals in as tight as I can get them in this sideline position. Three more. Nice and wide. The wider it is, the more tension. Two, last one, let's switch sides. So knee in, ankle in, knee in, ankle in. There's two, we have eight more.
All right. So we're gonna take that circle band off here. And then we have a break. So if you wanna grab water again, kind of towel off. If I know I'm short on time all the time, I just kind of like whiz through these breaks, but if I have plenty of time, I'll do them. Okay, so the next thing up is bridges. For this, you could either do a weight or no weight. I'm gonna bring the weight to my pelvis, heels go close to my bottom, and then I'm bridging up. So I'm really pushing through the heel, trying to squeeze the glutes at the top. We have 15 of these, so 12 to go. One more. All right, weight goes to the side, and then we're coming back to step ups. So this one, we're gonna go straight forward. So again, I can do no weight, and I'm focusing on pushing up. One, we'll do 12, two, arms come back, lat engages, three, four, at home, I often use like a little water cooler. I feel like that thing's like super duper stable and nice and high. You can use a step. You can use a fireplace. I'm really focusing on that slow lowering and control as well. All right, switch sides. In the early postpartum years, I like to kind of finish one side and then switch to the other. As the guide goes on, you're gonna see those alternate. That's harder for our brain to control that motion. So we're gonna start easier and then work up until harder, more dynamic movements, jumping, cutting, things like that. But first we really need to work on that base and our core. All right, we, next up, we have elevated mountain climbers. So again, since we're so early postpartum, I like to start everything elevated so that it's easier for my core. And then once I get better at it, I can start to move that up. So I'm gonna use a chair that's not movable and then I can do my mountain climbers in this position. Right. The nice thing about the app too is there's like no thinking. You just follow as you go along and it's feeding you the stuff that you're supposed to be doing postpartum. We're gonna go back to bridges because we still have time in this circuit. Weight goes on the pelvis. I drive through my heels, squeezing my glute all the way up. Two, when I come back down, I'm thinking about each spinal segment hitting the ground first. Same thing on the way up. I'm going up one vertebrae at a time, coming back down one vertebrae at a time. Really focusing on hip extension. That's something that is really hard to get back postpartum. Our hip flexors during pregnancy usually get really tight. So we wanna think about opening up the front of that pelvis. The bridge is one great way to do that. We have three more. Last one. All right, weight goes to the side. We're gonna go back to those step ups. So 12 on one side, 12 on the other. We have 35 seconds left, so we're gonna do five on each side for this one. If you know one side is a little bit weaker, 
You could spend the rest of your time just on that side. Usually though, humans don't like to do that. They like to do things they're already good at, but we really wanna focus on rebuilding our body in this postpartum time. Okay, so that set is done. We can take a break again. Again, water if you want. I'm gonna skip our break. So the last thing that we have up is an abdominal series. This lasts three minutes. The first thing that we're gonna do is leg pushes. So for this one, I'm gonna hold this for 20 seconds. I'm gonna lift my head and chest off. My knees are bent to 90. I'm gonna push with my hands. This is way harder than it looks. I'm gonna count to 20 here. Hold this puppy. I'm applying pressure downward with my hands and my knee is matching that pressure so that my legs don't move. Five more seconds. If you see shaking, that's okay. Again, your body and your brain are just reconnecting with that core. All right, hands down. Next up is a straight leg raise. So I'm gonna keep one leg bent. My other leg is nice and straight. I'm gonna think about lifting my head slightly to really engage my core. And then I'm gonna bring that leg straight up and down. I'm thinking about keeping my pelvis nice and stable. I'm inhaling and exhaling as I lift that leg. Seven more. As I bring my leg up, you should see my abdominals draw flatter. If you see coning or doming, you really want to work that breath. Otherwise, if you're not ready for this exercise, you could just do straight transverse abdominal contractions where you're just laying with your head and neck on the, you know, the, wall, uh, the ground, and then you're just tightening that abdominal wall. Again, everything is nice, slow, and controlled here. And in this exercise, you wouldn't think that you have to think about your rib cage, but I want those ribs down and engaged. That's where our abdominal muscles attach to on the top. So I wanna make sure that you don't see any rib flaring. It really does help to raise the head up a little to decrease that. And then the next one up is gonna be elevated side planks. So we're gonna do 30 seconds on each side of these. So I like to do these on the countertop or a chair or a couch at home. But again, we're starting with side planks. Our obliques during pregnancy get very tight and weak because our bump expands so much. So we really want those sides to engage. It also helps draw our stomach flatter in that postpartum period. That's 30 on this side. And then two, this is a reminder to make sure when you're carrying your kids, to make sure you're switching back and forth between the two sides. People usually have a preferred side, but this will make your oblique super asymmetrical. One will be strong and one will be weak, and the body does not like that. We have 10 more seconds here. Five, four, three, two, one. Again, this, and so many other exercises week by week are in a program in the Expecting and Empowered app, but it really helps gain strength in your core and then starts to get you into more dynamic mobility and strength. 